because such a failure rate is nearly unheard of. If you're a company who wants to stay in business, you would seriously want to reconsider the strategy that Nintendo's enacting. Hey, howdy, hey, everyone on the internet. This is Breadboard Gamer here, your friendly internet nobody. Unfortunately, today I'm going to be covering a topic which weighs heavy on my heart because this is a company I rather enjoy. But knowing that a company is not infallible, these are issues that are prevalent in many big companies and they're just treating their customers really poorly right now and it's very disheartening and I just had to cover it. I know there were many other big YouTubers who have covered this subject, but I wanted everyone who watches my content to know where I stand on this subject. So today we'll be reading an article from Game Rant discussing one in five Nintendo Switch users have experienced hardware crack issues. That's the name of the article. I will be giving my opinions on it after I am done reading you the article, and we're just going to begin now. This is by James Henry. It was published July 16th, 2018. When the Nintendo Switch launched, some players reported hardware issues, including cracks forming around the power button. The cracks had formed despite the owners saying that they had never dropped the console and had done nothing but treat it right. While there were several posts and comments about the issue on social media at the time, it was unclear how prevalent the issue was until now. Aiming to find out just how widespread the Nintendo Switch's hardware crack issue is, Nintendo Life conducted a poll. The publication asked, does your Switch have any cracks on it, casing that hadn't been caused by accidental damage, and received 1,189 votes on the matter of which 20% of respondents, or 1 in 5 people, said they had experienced these cracks. According to social media posts highlighted by the publication, the most common places where the cracks form is near the power button, in the right hand corner by the screw, and by the exhaust point. This is some speculation that this, these cracks are caused by heat as the console expands and contracts which would explain why so many people seem to have pieces falling off near the fan area in particular. Some have also suggested that since the issue is so apparent, it's likely that Nintendo has changed the Switch's design and addressed the problem with iterations of the console release since. In the comments, several readers say they have contacted Nintendo UK regarding repairs for their console. The quotes range from 130 pounds equivalent to 172 US dollars and as much as 170 pounds equivalent to 230 US dollars which is almost half the price of buying a Nintendo Switch brand new. Affected players also say that they have found their own replacement parts for close to $10, making the quoted price from Nintendo UK seem especially high. Some have also noted that when the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con problems were discovered, not only were players able to get refunds from Amazon rather than Nintendo, Nintendo also vowed to investigate the issue. However, no such indication has been made here. Instead, in a statement, Nintendo said that after checking in with its European team, we can confirm that we haven't received a notable number of consumer inquiries on this topic. Nintendo Switch owners in the UK, Europe, argue that it is patently false and that the issue is common, but it shows that Nintendo is unwilling to do anything about it. It's possible that Nintendo will reevaluate and re-engage on these statements, instead vowing to replace consoles for free, but few Switch owners are counting on it. End of article. You could probably tell where I got pretty heated there while I was reading that, and it's not going to end anytime soon, trust me. Nintendo, as a company, should be looking into this. It's 20% of their product being sold for giving people problems. That to me shows a major issue in their manufacturing process of the Switch, because such a failure rate is nearly unheard of. If you're a company who wants to stay in business, you would seriously want to reconsider the strategy that Nintendo's enacting. The biggest problem here, this isn't even the first time Nintendo as a company has introduced questionable business practices. As YouTube content creators, all you have to do is look back at their Let's Play policy to understand where I'm coming from here. For those of you who aren't into Let's Plays, I'll just remind you all of the lovely Joy-Con incident where last year a large group of buyers noticed the Joy-Cons were malfunctioning, sometimes didn't even work out of the box. 
And who came in to fix this? Not Nintendo, Amazon. I'll leave an article from Game Rant in the description below for anyone who wants to know more about this. Their price to repair these things, though, is where I really get absolutely furious. If you can buy the repair parts for $10, 10 measly US dollars, why the hell would you charge almost 10 times that to your customers? I know this sucks, but the only thing I could think of with pe for people who have this issue is to go to a friend or a repair shop that works in electronics to hopefully give a little bit of money to local businesses and keep their costs low. This will also hopefully prevent Nintendo from making any money off of this faulty equipment and hopefully get them to step up their act. Uh, the biggest problem though, their public image has been hurt somewhat by this, but not a lot. Their stocks fell drastically uh, last week, but in the last few days, they have skyrocketed to the highest they've been in a month. The only other repercussion for Nintendo was gaining a week's worth of bad publicity from YouTubers like me and Better, who publicly admonish the company for these practices. Now, I want this to be known, I still love the company, but I can wholeheartedly see when Nintendo has its faults. The business practices often alienate their customer base and at times prevent new customers from coming in because of how horrible they treat them. Even worse, they seem to never learn from it. That's just my opinion, guys, but what do you all think? Is Nintendo a bad company for this, or do you think me and other YouTubers are just blowing it out of proportion? I'm also kind of curious what you think the solution to this problem should be. Uh, let me know in the comments section below, and as always, hope you guys enjoyed it. That's about all for my opinions today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Think about subscribing to the channel. Be my very first, please. And you can also watch my previous video here, or watch all my videos on this playlist. Or if you're watching this in the future, you will see my most recent upload up here now. Have a wonderful day, and see you next time.